Hey guys, it's me, Caroline. And I'm Lindsay. And today you're going to be watching our video comparing the cultures of Oedipus and Gilgamesh. This is based on John Green, so if you get lost, just think of him. Mesopotamia was located in modern-day Iraq, which is next to the Tigris River and the Euphrates River. This patch of land earned its name the Fertile Crescent due to its seasonal flooding. This patch of land is located between the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, and the Caspian Sea. Rather than having one king rule this vast section of land, there was one king ruling city-states along the river. For example, the city of Babylon was ruled by Hammurabi, the city of Sumer was ruled by Sargon, and the city of Assyria was ruled by Tiglath Pileser. The cities of Mesopotamia were very religious. Some cities were even ruled by priests. Most cities were actually built around temples to the gods. These temples, aka ziggurats, were considered to be a ladder from the heavens. The first epic poem to be written in Mesopotamia was called the Epic of Gilgamesh. This epic describes the culture of the Mesopotamian people, which has influenced generations of people later on. The people of Mesopotamia came up with a way to record info known as cuneiform. In 2700 BC, they learned to record epics, hymns, and history onto clay tablets. Scribes are the people who transmitted information onto the tablets, which date back to 3300 BC. It's history of the people living in the city of Urk being ruled by King Gilgamesh. Most cities began to be ruled by an authoritarian government. Gilgamesh is the strongest man, being two-thirds God and one-third human. He was created by gods themselves, so he was the, quote, handsomest of men, end quote, because of his, quote, lordly in appearance, end quote. Therefore, he ruled with an iron fist. As one can already tell, the gods interfere in the lives of humans on a regular basis. The Epic of Gilgamesh references a flood brought by the gods, much like that from the Bible, where they, there was a, quote, flood on the earth for 40 days, end quote. There was one survivor of this great flood in both stories. The Bible refers to him as Noah, but the Epic of Gilgamesh refers to him as Utnapishtim. Another example is when the people complained to the gods, saying, quote, Gilgamesh sounds the toxins for his amusement. His ignorance has no bounds by day or night. No son is left with his father, for Gilgamesh takes them all, even the children. Yet, the king should be a shepherd to his pe people. End quote. And so, they created Enkidu to be Gilgamesh's perfect match. While Gilgamesh was on his quest, he encountered gods such as Humbaba, who he killed, and Ni Ninsun, who aided and prayed for safety on his journey. He was a human who was given immortal life. The people of Mesopotamia were obsessed with gaining everlasting life. Therefore, Gilgamesh went on a long journey to search for immortality. Though he pushed his human limitations, he is only immortal and had to face death just like his friend Enkidu. Not only is this epic poem a very early example of a hero's journey, but it encompasses the culture of the city of Urk. This being one of the earliest stories and one of the only stories to have survived this long, truly depicts what life was like for the people. These people were focused on religion, and kings were obsessed with gaining power that they couldn't control. The problems that people struggled with back then were similar to problems with people now, being that people still search for the meaning of life. Oedipus the King is a tragedy by the ancient Greek playwright Sophocles, first performed in about 429 BCE. It follows the story of King Oedipus of Thebes as he discovers that he was unwittingly killed his own father, Laius, and married his own mother, Jocasta. Over the centuries, it has come to be regarded by many as the Greek tragedy par excellence and certainly as a summit of Sophocles' achievements. Theater was new and a very big deal in this time period. Attending theater shows was the civic duty of males at this time. Theater made the people question the world around them and made them believe that if men went to enough plays, they would become smarter. Aristotle was the man who created the new definition of a tragedy. 
Aristotle believes that a tragedy is a, quote, imitation of an action that is serious, complete, and of a certain magnitude, end quote. Others see tragedy as pity and fear of the universe and do not reward the goodness that happens inside of it. The main themes of the play is fate and free will. Greek tragedies revolve around oracular predictions, also known as the conflict between the individual and the state. People are blind to the truth and are too naive to figure out the real situation. Throughout the play, characters are not sure of the truth, but the audience knows all along. This use of irony keeps the audience thinking and involved. Oedipus was born. His father, King Laius, ordered his mother, Jocasta, to have her servant kill him. Neither she nor her servant could kill the child, so they left him atop a hill to die of natural causes. A shepherd came along and found Oedipus and brought him to, the, to be the new child of King Polybus of Corinth. After living his life through a lie, Oedipus figures that he be granted the king of Thebes and rule alongside his wife, who ends up being his mother. Tiresias, a blind prophet, quotes, Alas, how terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the man that's wise. He depicts that ignorance can be bliss and that fate will always get the best of the ignorant man. While the stories of Gilgamesh and Oedipus are different in many ways, they also share similar characteristics. For instance, the characters of Gilgamesh and Oedipus are both kings. At the beginning of both stories, the citizens are suffering. Ironically, the citizens are suffering because of their king. Gilgamesh is a selfish king who abuses his rights, and so the people of Urk are suffering. Then, Oedipus is the cause of the plague that has attacked the city of Thebes. With that, the culture in the cities of Urk and Thebes focus on fate. The overarching power of their culture is fate. No one, not even the gods, could change a person's fate because it is set in stone. Both kings end up going to extensive measures to avoid their fate, but both are unsuccessful. Gilgamesh was attempting to avoid his fate of dying, and so he traveled to the ends of the earth and back to ultimately die. Oedipus was supposed to kill his father and marry his mother, so he left his home and put as much distance between them as possible. He too failed, because fate is inevitable. Both kings go through a hero's journey after tragedy strikes. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh's best friend, Enkidu, dies. This tragedy allowed Gilgamesh to realize his fear of dying, and so he set out on a quest to find Utnapishtim and gain immortality. In Oedipus, the people of Thebes are starving due to a plague. This tragedy causes Oedipus to go on a journey in order to uncover the truth about his questionable past. Both kings were selfless and tried to do right by their people. However, both of them had with harsh consequences that were beyond their control because they were at the mercy of destiny. Of Gilgamesh and Oedipus, the king, both depict the history of their people. These stories are significant because they are one of the few written records that have survived from these ancient citizens. They also both follow similar timelines and have alike themes of following one's destiny wherever it leads. The themes that focus on fate are still important to people today. These stories have affected generations of people because they were asking questions about fate and pushing limits about death. Exclusively, Gilgamesh and Oedipus were both leaders. Both of them were selfless and put their people before themselves. This sacrifice led to their downfall by means they couldn't control or understand. Gilgamesh and Oedipus could not avoid their fate and suffered the consequences. Hope you enjoyed. Here's why we're excited.